observe this animation closely. Over here you will find that when a ball is rolling off the roof of the car, nothing happens. But when the same ball is dropped from a height, the windshield breaks. Now why do you think this is happening even though we are considering the same ball? When the ball merely rolls off, it does not do any work on the windshield. But when the ball drops from a height on the windshield, it causes the windshield to move because it applies a force on the windshield due to which the windshield moves or gets shattered. So thus we can say that when the ball is raised to a particular height, it has the ability to do work on the windshield and that is why it is able to break the windshield. So let us get behind the concept of this. We see that when the work is done in order to lift the ball, it is getting converted to the energy which is getting stored in the ball. Now we can say that this stored ball has a certain amount of energy because work was done in order to lift the ball. So the energy possessed by the raised ball is mechanical energy. Why? Because when we are raising the ball, we are changing the position. So we know that mechanical energy also depends on the position of a particular object. More particularly, this energy is known as potential energy. That is the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its specific position or changed configuration. And this is known as potential energy of the body. So because the ball had a certain amount of potential energy when it was raised, it was able to do work on the windshield of the car in order to break it. So now consider this picture over here. Over here you will find that Katniss Everdeen is aiming her bow and arrow to a particular target. Now when she is taking hold of her bow and arrow, what do you think will happen if she does not stretch the string? Without stretching the string, if Katniss wants to fire her arrow, she will find that the arrow merely falls off to the ground in front of her. But if she fires her arrow after she stretches the string and lets it go, she will find that the arrow actually travels a long distance. So what can we say? We can say that the stretch string has some ability to do work on the arrow or in other words, the stretch string has some amount of energy. We can illustrate this concept further with the help of a very simple video. Now notice in this video, when the catapult string is not stretched much, the ball simply falls off. When it is stretched to a greater distance, the ball travels a considerable distance. And when it is stretched to a great extent, the ball is flung to a very, very long distance. So what can we say? We can say that the stretch string has some amount of capability to do work on the ball. Or in other words, the stretch string has some potential energy just like the stretch string in the bow. So we found out about two kinds of potential energy. The first kind of potential energy was associated with the height of a particular object. So that potential energy which is associated with the height is known as gravitational potential energy. So how can we define gravitational potential energy? The potential energy possessed by a body due to its position relative to the center of the earth is known as gravitational potential energy. And we also studied about another kind of potential energy. This potential energy came into being when the shape or configuration of an object was changed. In the case of the bow, we were stretching the string of the bow. In the case of the catapult, we were stretching the string of the catapult. So this is known as elastic potential energy, which is associated with shape. So whenever we are stretching the string of the catapult or the string of the bow, it has certain amount of potential energy. The potential energy possessed by a body in the deformed state due to a change in configuration is known as the elastic potential energy. So in the case of the stretch string of the bow and catapult, it had elastic potential energy. So now let us consider another very interesting video. 
over here a man in the building is initially dropping a ball on the car parked in front of the building from a certain height. Now he moves up to a greater height in the building and he drops the same ball on the car. Notice that the damage done to the car is greater than the first case. When he moves to the roof of the building and he drops the ball, you will find that the damage done is quite significant. Now, why do you think this is happening? That the damage done is increasing once the height from which the ball is falling is increasing? Now, firstly, let us revisit an old concept. That concept is that work done by the person will be equal to force into displacement because the work done by any person on any object is equal to the force applied on it times the displacement that the object is undergoing. So let us find out what is happening in this case. So when a body is being lifted upwards, a certain amount of force has to be applied. Now, you know that on every body in the universe, gravity acts. Now, in this case, gravity is also acting on the ball. So in order to lift the ball up against gravity, an exact equal amount of force will have to be applied. That is, the force that has to be applied on the body, that is the ball, will have to be equal to its weight. Thus, the force required to lift the ball is equal to the weight of the ball. So we can say that the weight of the ball is equal to mass of the ball into acceleration due to gravity. And if we consider the mass of the ball is m and acceleration due to gravity is g, so the weight of the ball will be given by mg. And this will be the exact same force which the man will require to lift the ball. Now we are displacing the ball, that is the man is displacing the ball from a particular position on the ground to a position in the building. So let us say that for any position from where he is dropping the ball, it is located at a height h above the ground. So with respect to the ground, that is the initial position, the position where he is going to the building has a height of h, which is the final position. So the displacement of the object is h minus 0, that is nothing but h. So we have the force required as mg and the displacement of the object h. So now let us see how we can find out the work done. So the work done by the man will be mg into h, that is mgh. Now we have studied that the work being done on lifting the ball is getting stored as potential energy of the ball because potential energy is dependent on the particular height or the position with respect to the earth. Thus we can say that the potential energy of the ball is also mg into h. It is because of this potential energy that the ball is able to do work on the car and cause damage to the car. So since the height increases, potential energy increases and the damage done to the car also increases. So as you can see, potential energy is mgh and on the surface of the earth, h is equal to 0. So m into g into 0 is going to give me 0. Thus, on the surface of the earth, the potential energy is 0. And the earth's surface actually represents a surface where the potential energy of any body is 0. Now when the body moves vertically upwards, what happens? The height increases, so basically h increases. Now as h increases in mgh, because m is constant for a body and g is also constant because the body is on earth, if we increase h, the potential energy will increase. Similarly, if a body is moved vertically downwards, then its height from the ground, h, decreases. So keeping m and g constant, if h decreases, then the potential energy will also decrease along with it. So in this case, we can clearly explain what was happening. When the height was less, we can see that the potential energy was less and it caused less damage to the car because it was able to do less work in damaging the car. 
when the height is increased that is when the ball is dropped from a greater height h increases thus potential energy of the ball increases and its ability or its capability to do more work on the car and cause damage also increases now let us consider another interesting case over here you will find that initially the man at the top of the building is dropping a small ball on the car and it is causing some amount of damage now the man drops a bigger ball on the car and you will find that the damage caused is significant so now can we explain what is happening over here over here the heavier ball that the man is taking has a greater mass than the small ball which has a lesser mass thus when mass of the ball is increasing because the man is dropping the ball from the same height h remains the same and is constant and g is the same so keeping g and h constant when m is increasing the potential energy simultaneously increases and when m decreases the potential energy also decreases so we can say that when a heavier ball is being dropped because it has more potential energy it is able to cause more damage to the car than when a lighter ball which has a lesser value of m is dropped on the car now since potential energy is also a form of energy and since energy is measured in joules potential energy is also measured in joule and it is represented by the capital letter j so now i have a question for you the question is calculate the potential energy of a bowling ball kept on the top of burj khalifa which is the tallest building in the world so obviously the ball is at quite a height and it must have a significant amount of potential energy we have been given that the mass of the bowling ball is 5 kg and the height of burj khalifa that is still the absolute top is 830 meters and we have also been given that g is equal to 10 meters per second square for ease of calculation so let us see how we can find out the potential energy so we have been given three things mass of the body that is m equal to 5 kg the height at which the body is kept h equal to 830 meters and g which is equal to 10 meters per second square now we know the formula of potential energy is m into g into h now we have the value of m as 5 the value of g 10 and the value of h that is 830 thus we place these respective values and we find that the potential energy of the ball is equal to 41500 joules so the ball that is kept at the top of burj khalifa will have a potential energy of 41500 joules and it will have a capability to do this amount of work on any object or any other body it hits and that is a significant amount of work so you better not be in the path of the ball when it falls from the top of burj khalifa because any object it hits it is going to cause a significant amount of damage